Hello, and this week we are talking about erosion, something I'm sure many of you are familiar with, and we'll talk more specifically about it through these different lectures. So first I want to emphasize that erosion is a natural process, and it is often compounded by human activities. And when we're talking about forested watersheds, we're talking about wildland fires, um, not that fires are human activities, excuse me, but um, logging practices and road building are huge factors in forest, forested watersheds that'll impact erosion. It's a very important issue because it impacts water quality that we talked about before um, the break. Um, it's going to add to that turbidity, um, add more sediments to the stream. It can uh, increase flooding, the, the um, incident of flooding, because once you get more sediment in the stream, and the stream can't hold all the water, the water is going to overflow from the stream, and then it's going to impact fish habitat. Fish do not like to live in cloudy, sediment-filled water. So what is erosion? Erosion is a natural process, and it's energy-driven. It's, it's where the energy provided by water or wind and gravity is going to drive that detachment, transport, and deposition of sediments. And in this lecture, I'm going to talk mostly about detachment, transport, and de deposition. But before that, I want to explain what sediments are. So sediments are those soil particles that are becoming detached, that are detached from the soil surface. They're transported, they're deposited. That's what we call sediments. So sand, silts, and clays are what we call sediments that get into the stream. And that's what this photograph here is showing you. All those sediments coming from this river being deposited, um, perhaps that's ocean or a lake, um, but all that cloudiness there are those sediments. So erosion and that buildup of sediments is a major concern in watershed management. And so it's a very important topic that we need to discuss. So first, I want to emphasize again that erosion requires the expenditure of energy and that soil particles are detached from the surface by the energy that comes from falling raindrops, uh, moving water and wind. And we are going to be focusing mainly on water because this is watershed management, not to say that wind isn't going to be a factor, but um, we're going to mainly focus again on the falling raindrops and the moving water. So here's where the energy comes in. Um, on a bare soil, uh, 200 tons of soil can be splashed in the air during a rainstorm. Those individual soil particles can be splashed a foot and a half into the air. That's the energy that's coming down from these raindrops. And that's um, that detachment I was talking about. This is how detachment happens, is the raindrops coming down, um, splashing on the soil surface, and moving those particles away from the soil surface. Um, a lot of deterioration happens when those raindrops or even water just flows over the surface of soil. It's going to remove those sediments. And I have a, a video that kind of emphasizes the amount of energy that it takes to detach um, these soil particles. So let's look at this right now. I'll make it um, full size. Nope, that's not working. Here we get the theater mode. Um, I think you'll be able to see this. And there it is, the big splash. It wasn't a foot and a half high, but and these are glass beads, by the way, just kind of um, mimicking sand to show you what happens when that um, water drop that comes down and hits those soil surfaces. And there's the thing. But here's another image of that water hitting and coming around. Um, dispersing. You can see the disbursement of those sediments there. So that, that's what we're talking about when we're talking about the energy that's happening there that's removing those sediments or detaching them from the soil surface. Um, the next thing that happens is transport, um, where those the soil particles, the sediments, 
are transported um, down through the stream. You're going to have a lot of energy in those um, downslope parts, those steeper slopes of the watershed, and a lot less energy down here below for transport. So that's, again, it's moved by water and wind, but mainly what we're talking about in our watersheds is water. And so you're going to have a lot of energy, again, on those steep slopes between the mouth and the um, headwaters of your uh, watershed. And that's where a lot of transport will happen. I also want to emphasize that transport is a, an important ecosystem function, that a lot of um, material is moved through that water. Um, along with the sediments, you have nutrients being moved, and those nutrients um, can be moved to different places in the watershed um, and add nutrients to different surfaces. Uh, organisms will um, consume things that are being flown, that are being transported in the stream. So it's an important, the transport is an important function of a watershed. It's just that when you get too much of that sediment in there and that's transported through that erosion is when you get um, the issues. So we get all those sediments moved and along with a lot of other materials in the watershed. Now deposition is going to happen, um, like I said, you're going to have a lot of energy here in these steeper slopes, but then when the energy starts dissipating and the load of the stream, the sediment load of the stream is very high, there's not going to be enough energy to move those sediments, and so that's when you'll have deposition. And you've got a lot of de deposition at the bottom of the watershed. It's like coming off a water slide or um, you know, coming down a roller coaster where uh, you know, the car slows down when you have a flatter surface where you have less slope, and that's the same thing that's happening with those sediments, and that's how um, they become deposited. So all three of those processes, again, are going to involve energy because you need that water energy to detach, where you have that splash effect, the transport, and the deposition. But all these processes can happen continuously and simultaneously in a storm event. So you can have um, material that's been detached and transported and deposited, and then the process starts again, where it may get deposited for an hour or so or maybe less during a intense storm and then that um, material will get detached and transported again and deposited again so all, all three of those things can be happening at, at different places and different times in the watershed uh, again process happens again and again so in summary um, i want to emphasize that erosion is a natural process and it requires energy. It requires energy for that detachment, transport, and deposition of sediments. Um, detachment's going to occur when the raindrops or wind interact with the soil surface. Transport is going to involve the movement of the sediments through water. And not only are sediments moved, but nutrients and other um, vital materials for ecosystem function are going to be transported as well. And next I'll be talking about the types of erosion.